In climbing, flow is a magical word that describes an ease of movement. A person in flow climbs naturally up the wall with no wasted effort. But how does one achieve this mystic state? Does it depend more on strength, technique, or just good beta? The flow formula is a series that explores some of the key components for developing flow in your climbing. This first episode focuses on simplifying movement. One of the first steps to creating flow in any process involves getting rid of waste. This is true in production lines, supply chains, and of course, physical movement. Applied to climbing, waste reduction can be done by reducing the number of moves it takes to climb a problem. Let's start by taking a look at this red V3 and counting the number of moves it takes to climb it. We'll count each touch of a hand or foothold as one move. Now, let's look at some of the techniques we can use to simplify those movements. When moving laterally through a climb, the conservative approach is to traverse with hips square to the wall. Your center of gravity, and subsequently your center line, remains on the inside of your points of contact, otherwise known as your base of support. This type of sideways shifting is what I like to call two-dimensional climbing. While it's quite basic and easy to execute, it does take longer and requires a bit more energy. The cross is a move that converts two-dimensional climbing to three-dimensional climbing by adding rotation of the hips. When performing a cross, we keep our lead hand in place and reach ahead of it with our backhand. In doing this, our center of gravity transitions to the outside of our base of support. The hips rotate to perpendicular to the wall, and your balance begins to feel slightly compromised. Completing the cross involves pivoting the toes and rotating your hips the other way. We've now covered the same distance with fewer moves and in less time. The key points to executing a cross comfortably include setting the feet ahead and rotating the hips. When we lead with the feet, we are preemptively establishing our base of support for the finished position. Once our feet are set ahead of us, we can pivot off both toes to accompany the rotation of our hips. Notice that I keep all my points of contact when I do this to minimize any swing. The cross move can be done either overhand or underhand. Similar to crossing with the hands, we can also cross with our feet. The step through is a leg technique we can use to avoid having to match on footholds. I typically like to step through the inside of my other leg so I can keep my hip close to the wall. Oftentimes, the step through is used to accompany a cross with the hands. Now let's revisit the red V3 from earlier and see how these techniques can be applied. I start this boulder with a right hand cross. This avoids having to match on the brain and lets me naturally finish the traverse on my left hand. The next cross is nicely set up with a left hand on the ear, which lets me swing easily to the undercling. Continuing the trend of avoiding matching hands, I reach for the Waco with my left hand despite it looking slightly more fitting for the right hand. This is okay because the next hold is another giant ear that I use to cross again. I set my feet ahead of my hands in order to counter pressure for the final cross move, which transitions me to the finish hold. Let's do a side by side comparison of this boulder problem climbed with crosses and with matches. We'll count the moves for both problems.
Here we have a V6 that may be one of the longest boulder problems I've climbed. None of the moves are very difficult by themselves, but the sheer volume of movements is what creates the challenge. It's also a great way to look for opportunities to simplify moves and eliminate waste. Let's see how using the cross simplifies the moves on the bottom half of this V6. This boulder has a similar start to the red V3, but here using the cross for the first move isn't necessarily the best option. In order to know which hand to start the sequence, I used a method of working backwards from a checkpoint hold. A checkpoint hold is one that has a very definitive hand sequence. I know that I want to move to this hold with my right hand, so going backwards, this hold is for the left, the one below for the right, which naturally fits into a lie back. So this hold should be started with the left hand. Putting the sequence together, it looks like this. Note how completing the right hand cross naturally sets my hips in position for the next left hand move. Now let's see a side by side comparison of the problem climbed with crosses and with matches. We'll keep track of the total move count in the corners. While this style of flow can be a personal movement choice among climbers, the principles of simplifying moves and reducing waste have universal applications. I've personally used the step-through technique to help Redpoint in my last hard project outdoors. I hope this video helps you rethink your climbing and refine your movement. Until next time, move better, climb harder.